I would like to tell you about the fable of Lucifer, the fallen angel, and why all denominational Bibles must teach this doctrine, which isn't in the Bible at all. At first, there was only objective truth in the garden, but then the Lord allowed Satan to teach subjective truth, and Eve, subjective truth, she thought the fruit looked good to eat, that she ate it, and so her and Adam, because they chose subjective truth of men over the sub objective truth of God, they were cast out of the garden, and so humanity was out of the garden for 6,000 years, so humanity was out of presence of God in the sense of objective truth, all truth being objective truth from God. And uh, so we read in Romans 3, verse 4, let God be true and every man a liar. And uh, that simply means that spiritual warfare between God and man, objective truth of God and the subjective truth of men, any subjective truth men gives about moral standards is, is a lie. It contradicts objective truth of God. So Jeremiah 10, 23, we read that men rule over men, even though in Jeremiah 10, 23, we read that men can't guide his own path, morally speaking, much less can he lead other men. So that's why we have had the constitution in our nation, because men can't lead themselves morally. So we needed the checks and balances because all men would have their thumbs on the scales of justice. And so that's what happened for 6,000 years of history. But now Jesus came to this world and he promised truth that would set men free from subjective truth of men. So for a thousand years, he would rule over men on this earth. So he began his rule over men in 70 AD. But in 340 AD, the Lord allowed a great falling away or an apostasy when the Catholic Church gave up salvation from the only faith system that could give salvation. And that was Christ, one faith system of religion, Christianity. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. The Catholic Church gave up salvation for what? For subjective truth. So eventually they could have a pope that claimed to be God. So that eventually they could claim that children were born in sin. So that they could control, manipulate, and abuse small children. Well, they've done so almost 1,680 years now. And not only they, but some Protestant Catholics and Protestants both ganged up against Anti-Baptists all with the same doctrine of whether children are born sinners or not. Killed hundreds of thousands of them, quote, Christian warfare against Anti-Baptists. They named them Anti-Baptists. They said, you like immersing adults so much, we'll just drown you. They drowned most of the 600,000 that they killed. Christian Crusades, they called them. How was the world able to give up Christ ruling over this world with objective truth from God, though, in the kingdom of heaven? Well, God gave to man a strong delusion. We forgot history. We forgot facts. We forgot how spiritual warfare worked. Seven seals of Revelation, when they were broken, that's how God reveals to us some objective truths again. And there's more than this one having to do with Lucifer, the fallen angel. But that's what I want to deal with at this point in time. How was the world able to give up objective truth? Again, the strong delusion, 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 11. That's when the spiritual dark ages started, when, when men just gave up. Christ ruling. I mean, God allowed it to happen. Why did God allow denominational to come in? Why did he allow this apostasy? Well, so that Christianity, Christianity could be rebooted when the world was populated with billions. So truth is so powerful. It was only on this earth. Objective truth from God is so powerful. It's only on this earth for 1,000 years. And God wanted to offer salvation to billions of people in Christianity. Again, <clears throat> just because we were in apostasy doesn't mean that we're going to be lost. God's long-suffering, not willing for any to perish. So he worked out the scheme of redemption, but it required ignorance. It required men to be ignorant of, of truth and not having God's truth and wisdom of God being hidden away. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7. Why was it hidden away? So that men could crucify Christ, for one thing. 
how did men how did men come up with that? How could men be so ignorant? Denominational Bibles. Denominational Bibles that had the doctrine in them that Satan was Lucifer, the fallen angel. Why is that important? Because men thought they had a right to give their own doctrine. You see, if Satan's doctrine was wrong, then men's doctrine could be okay. So that's why it's essential for all denominational Bibles to believe this concept that Satan was Lucifer, a fallen angel. Now, again, the Catholic Church, when they came up with their Bible, well, how did the Catholic Church get away with all this? God allowed them, just like he allowed Gnostic Jews to crucify Christ and denominationalism. So God allowed the Catholic Church to come up with denominationalism denominational Bibles, but guess what? They copied the Apocrypha books, books of men, put them in the Bible just like men did with the Septuagint. How did they manipulate God's word in the Septuagint? They changed the meaning of the word Elohim from plural to singular. That's how they denied Christ. That was their authority to crucify the Son of God, singular to plural. Men thought they could stand between God and man and define biblical words. And that's why they denied Christ. That's why the Septuagint was their authority, because men thought they could define biblical words, come up with their own doctrine, their own faith systems, that it was Satan was the problem, a uh, fallen angel was the problem. No, spiritual warfare is between the wisdom of God and the wisdom of men. And so again, men came up with denominational Bibles only because they blamed it on a fallen angel, sin on a fallen angel. You see, subjective truth comes, comes from men, not fallen angels. Subjective truth is a problem with man. I don't know if there are other beings that come up with subjective truth, but Christian and spiritual warfare have to do with subjective truth from God and subjective truth of man. Now, the Catholic, again, the Catholic Church did many other things. At first, they hid the Bible away from the lay person, so you couldn't read it and understand that sin is... Subject to truth, men. They changed the language of the Bible. I'm most certainly they got rid of a lot of books that that maybe men wrote and they talked about life where God ruled over men with all authority. But mostly they had apocryphal books. That's why apocryphal books are so necessary. It gives their popes authority to give the Bible to men. And the second seal broken in Revelation, it identifies Satan as man of sin. And then that's what we read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And really, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, talking about the apostasy of the Catholic Church. Again, they gave up truth. We went to apostasy. But it tells us that when the man of sin is revealed, that's when the apostasy ends. That's when the spiritual dark ages end. That's when Christianity reboots and men start preparing again for the second age of the kingdom of heaven. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and read about Satan as the man of sin. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We ask you, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together unto him, it's in the thousand-year kingdom of God, to the end that you be not quickly shaken from your understanding or be troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as from us, that the day, see, they're waiting for that day. Remember Hebrews 10, 25, don't forsake the assembly of yourselves together as you see the day approaching. What? That is the thousand-year kingdom of heaven approaching. One day is to God as is a thousand years to man, or one, a thousand years to man is as one day to God. That's the key to the kingdom of heaven. So about Christ's return, let no man deceive you by any means for that day. That's a hundred year, that's a thousand year kingdom of heaven. It's not going to come until after their first is apostasy. And, and first century Christians had apostasy just as we do. That's that's how they crucified Christ is by their apostasy, by believing that Satan was a was listening for the fallen angel. He goes on to say, and the man of sin is revealed. Now, wait a minute. It's going to be apostasy. And then Satan's going to be identified as the man of sin. The son of perdition. He that opposes and exalts himself against all that is called God or that is worship. So that he sits in the temple of God, setting himself forth as God. You see, Satan was a dead man, but his spirit possessed the bodies of Gnostics in the first century. 
God allowed demon possession, that is spirits of dead evil men in the bodies of men. So Satan, he was opposing God in the temple in the first century, setting himself forth as God. So these Gnostic Jews were demon possessed and Satan was there and they crucified God with, by the authority of the Septuagint. They set themselves up as God, giving to the world the Bible and crucifying Christ. Remember you not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know that the revelation of Satan is being held back until the right time. What? The revelation of the fact that Satan is a man of sin was held back. It was sealed up. It's been sealed up for us for 1,680 years in the book of Revelation. We couldn't understand what spiritual warfare was because God wasn't ready. He wasn't ready to bring back Christianity. He wasn't, the world wasn't populated with enough people for him to bring back Christianity. The revelation of Satan came at the right time. Now is the right time. The second age of the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For the mystery of lawlessness does already work. Spiritual warfare, okay? Do you think there's spiritual warfare is not going on now? But subjective truth of men against the objective truth of God? Only there's one that restrains now, and that probably was the Holy Spirit in the first century. Remember, he was gradually, he gradually gave to the church the Bible over 40 years. So Christian warfare goes on about 40 years. God doesn't give to the world the Bible quickly because you couldn't have spiritual warfare. You could not have denominationalism without, it, unless you told, unless people believe that Satan was Lucifer, the fallen angel. But when that information comes out, and it, and at least you know there's not going to be nations and, and groups of people believing that any longer. They're going to know that God exists and. Uh, the time is back for Christ, for the church to return, Christianity to return. It's one that restrains now till he may be taken out of the way. That is Satan taken out of the way. Lucifer, the, the doctrine of Lucifer, the fallen angel taken out of the way. You see, and then will be revealed the lawless one whom the Lord Jesus will slay with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the manifestation of his coming. Okay, denominational, the, the uh, mega sword of Satan. That's denominational Bibles, and it's all, all Gnosticism, subject to truth of men. Jesus is going to slay that with the breath of his mouth, the sword of his mouth. Remember the sword coming out of the mouth of Christ in the, in the vision and revelation? That's opposed to the mega sword, subject to truth of men, destroyed by the manifestation of his coming in the second age of the kingdom of heaven. So there you have it. Satan is the man of sin. And that truth was being held back. This was a covert operation for the second age of the kingdom of heaven to return.